Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Uh, we are sorry about the delay uh, today. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, our guest speakers today. To my very right is Mr. Uh, Yuchio uh, Takahashi Kiso. He's a CEO of International Casino Institute. And to his right is Mr. Yoichi Torihata, Professor of Faculty of Science, Social Science and Humanities at Shizuoka University and talk today about uh, very uh, timely issues about the casinos in Japan and uh, as the Japanese parliament approved the bill in December to uh, leg legitimize, legitimize the domestic casinos, international gambling and uh, other activities related. And there are some uh, uh, concern and, uh, by some uh, Japanese uh, opposition parties about that, but the government uh, seemed to have uh, applied some new rules, social rules, to make sure that uh, this uh, casino and gambling uh, bills will not affect the social lives. And we will have more uh, talk about these issues at uh, today's event. Uh, first speaker will be Mr. Uh, Torihata. I would like to uh, give the floor to Mr. Torihata. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I very much appreciate the FCCJ for providing me this opportunity uh, to express my opinion on this uh, issue. Why am I against the legalization of casino in Japan? I would like to submit five reasons in this regard. Uh, first reason, uh, let me confirm, uh, first of all, that in Japan, uh, we have a old tradition of gambling, tobacco in Japanese which has been a banned crime under Article 185 of the Penal Code. Uh, but under the, this law, gambling in the home of Keba, Keirin, and so on are treated as legal gambling. According to the Just Ministry of Japan, the type of gambling that satisfies the condition of public interest, public management, and law speculation, and so on, are lawful. On the other hand, uh, pachinko, uh, which is essentially gambling, is treated as game because the balls which comes out as a price cannot be cashed directly. As a result, we have many problem gamblers in Japan amounting to 4.8% of our population or about uh, 5.4 million Japanese uh, suffering from addiction. In spite of this situation, problem gamblers mostly bred through pachinko <coughs> have not been rescued by public funding because pachinko is not considered as gambling under the law. The first reason as to why I am against casino legalization is that it will induce more severe gambling addiction on top of the already severe problem we have today. Second reason. Today, the advocates of casino are emphasizing that the large investment to build the IR as well as the large profit to be generated from the IR will have a tremendous effect in boosting the Japanese economy through strengthening the competitiveness of our tourism industry. However, economic character of gambling, according to the suggestion of Paul Samuelson, is a simple sip of money from pocket to pocket, with the production of no new economic value. In addition to this, the more the gambler continue to bet, the more the casino will win. This business model inevitably makes a gamblers poorer and destroy their lives. I believe that the economic gain of the casino is only a result of cannibalization caused by casino, which results in a zero sum in total. Alan Mahra from the Reserve Bank of Philadelphia pointed out the following whole aspect in his paper economic and social impact of introducing casino gambling. One, destination effect. Two, uh, recapture effect. Three, 
a substitution effect for a leakage effect. He concluded that uh, this element must be ignored, incorporated uh, when uh, calculating the net economic effect of casino. In this meaning, Japan will have no cannibalize, uh, sorry, uh, Japan will have to cannibalize other countries in order to gain net profit. In other words, Japan must be in the position of the winner in the VIP gambler market in Asia, especially by feeding upon the super rich Chinese gamblers. Happening says that the Asian gambling market is saturating rapidly, and the competition between the IRs will become more intense. Therefore, the probability of rich foreign gamblers visiting Japanese IRs is getting lower as we speak. Third reason, the foreign casino operators, such as the likes of the Las Vegas Sands, express that uh, they will invest $10 billion to construct an IR in the Kanto or Kansai areas. And Advocata insists that the IR operation will generate huge gambling revenue, amounting to 2,000 or 3 trillion M, which enables the low revenue department of casino to operate. I would like to remind you that the Odaiba Casino, the first plan for casino in Japan by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, estimated a revenue of 30 billion M. The revenue jumped to the levels a digit higher after the plan for the casino changed from a casino house, such as a European type casino, to the IR type. The 12 MGM Casino located in the US and the revenue of $2.7 billion. The average is $0.22 billion. But MGM China earned $3.3 billion in 2013 at its peak. The secret is a huge revenue. Greater than in the US is that the rich Chinese gamblers who lost $2.2 billion amounted to 63% of the whole revenue. The revenue from slot machine and table games targeting the middle class and elderly people of the US earn only a small amount compared to the huge revenue of those such as in Macau or Singapore. How can I IR Japan earn more than Macau or Singapore? Is it possible for IR in Japan to gain such a high profit in the case that ordinary foreign travelers visiting Japan just happen to drop into a casino for nighttime fun? Advocator insists that Japanese market will never become over competitive because the number of casinos in Japan will be restricted to around 10 in the future. But Japanese government cannot control the number of IR casino in the Asian VIP gambling market. The Asian gambling market is shrinking rapidly. For example, the revenue of a casino in Macau decreased to 60% of its peak, mainly due to the shelf because of Chinese VIP gamblers. And the several Korean IR casino, such as the Resort World Jeju, will come in the already saturated market. It will be very difficult for Japanese IRs as latecomers to gain a certain percentage of foreign VIP gamblers. I believe that a Japanese IR casino will fall into the same spear situation as in the Asian market or the US Atlantic City market, where the revenue of a casino reduced by half and five casinos among the 12 collapsed because of the high competitive pressure from legalized casino in neighboring states. The real target of foreign casino operator willing to invest in Japan is the income and financial set of Japanese people, especially the wealthy and the elderly. It is said that the revenue of casino in Japan will be 2.2 trillion yen if Japanese gamblers spent as much as uh, Chinese gamblers who spent amount equivalent to 
45% of the GDP of China. The foreign casino operators, such as Las Vegas Suns, are willing to invest because they are confident that they can achieve high profitability only in the Japanese market. In this case, their huge revenue is a simple result of cannibalization, which brings, brings a negative effect uh, through the leakage effect. For example, uh, Las Vegas Suns claimed that they returned $15.4 billion to their investors since 2012. Uh, for this reason, advocate is that the global standard measure to prevent a gambling addiction, uh, such as those in Singapore, can minimize the harmful effect of casino. And they insist that they can use uh, casino revenue to reduce the number of problem gamblers by strengthening preventive measures for gambling in these things such home as Pachinko. Certainly, the NHP, NCBG of Singapore emphasized a reduction in the ratio of problem gambling from 2.6% in 2011 to 0.7% in 2014, which means minus 73%, according to their survey. But we observed the survey in detail. The rate of participation in casino also decreased from 7% to 2%. That is minus 71%, which means that the number of Singapore residents participating in casino decreased drastically. On the other hand, the number of residents who applied to the self-exclusion system, which is a ban on entering casino, has reached about 325,000. The NCPG is educating people on how gambling, especially in casino, is dangerous. We'd be there expressing gambling did not make me rich. Instead, I had mountain of debt to clear from the true story of Miss Wang Lei. Since Singapore has been focusing on restricting dissent from participating in casino, I believe that the decrease of problem gambler in Singapore is merely a result of lower participation rate. It is said that casino gambling has a strong nature of speculation as compared to the form of gambling to induce the gambler into addiction. According to the exposure theory of gambling addiction, casino gambling, which has no limitation on betting money, and 24 hours playing time with no closing hours is more addictive than other forms of gambling that have limited open days, operating hours, and limit on the money they can bet. According to the uh, research conducted by John Weld, a research institute on addiction, SUNY at Buffalo, comparing the rate of problem gamblers in 1919 and 2013 in the US. The residents in the neighborhood closest to casino tend to have a higher chance of becoming frequent gamblers and problem gamblers. It is very difficult to cure problem gamblers because they tend to deny their addiction. I, can, I cannot say it is okay. Just because problem gambling can be cured in the long run after they have exhausted their money and asset sacrificed their friends and family, and have committed some crimes, thanks to the money from casino revenue. Fifth reason, advocate insists that a casino will occupy only 3% of the whole IR floor space, and claim that it is just an entertainment facility for all family members to enjoy. But in reality, the IR is a business model that drives more family to casino and costs more ordinary people to experiencing gambling. For example, in Las Vegas, visitors intending to gambling, gamble uh, jumped from 1% to 12% after they tried gambling on the first visit. 73% of the visitors to Las Vegas gambled in casino over their three night stay, and the temporary winning experience of gambling opens the door to gambling addiction. It is said that the ratio of female problem gambler has increased dramatically 
since many states in the US legalized casinos. The casino uh, profit engine of IR need to earn huge revenue of over 20% of ROI to recover its large investment and also to support other low profit facilities and comps to satisfy the investors. For casino to earn the annual revenue of 2 trillion yen, 20 million Japanese residents must continue to lose 100,000 yen every year. In other words, the IR casino has a strong economic incentive to drive the entire Japanese population into gambling addiction. Strong prevention measures such as those of Singapore NCPG are impossible to introduce in Japan because it will harm the profitability of the casino. Conclusion. Presently, foreign visitors to Japan have increased dramatically more than those of Singapore. And there's no need to hurry to legalize the casino in order to strengthen the competitiveness of international tourism in Japan. First of all, we must tackle the deep issue of gambling due to pachinko and as a such form of gambling. The IR bill has many defects. For example, it has no article concerning an NCPG the like of Singapore's and no de democratic process uh, such as a referendum to allow the community to decide whether or not to accept a casino, especially after evaluating the economic benefit and social cost. I want to stress that this IR bill, which contains many problems, will bring a devastating result in Japan mm. in the future. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I have only 10 minutes. <laughs> he asked me. <laughs> um, okay, on the course of the deliberation of the Akashina IR bill last year, um, we had lots of stories made up by someone. It could, it could be pro, pro gaming or uh, con gaming. However, there's lots of stories, which is not the fact. In other words, the alternative fact, maybe. So <laughs> I would like to explain that. What is the truth or what is the myth and facts over the gaming industry? Uh, myth one, some, opponent, some, some opponents said, Gambling is a de uh, decreasing industry globally. And there were lots of bankruptcy of casinos, especially in Atlantic City in the US. And some of the states' governments in the U United States rejected the new development of casino in their area. And if we look, look at the Asian market, economy of Macau is decreasing because of the policy of the uh, mainland China. Yeah, someone, someone is telling that, actually, yeah, he said that. <laughs> but if we look at the number or statistics, this is the, this is the uh, gr uh, gross gaming revenue in commercial gaming, uh, commercial gaming revenue in the United States. Actually, commercial casino revenue in the United States is record high in 2015. Nobody say that this kind of industry is decreasing. It's growing, actually. And then, this is fact, fact 1B. If we look at the every state in the United States, uh, since we had, uh, since 21st century, we have nine states legalizing casino, new states, and some of the opponents pick up only a few examples where the legalized, ga legalizing gambling, gambling is de rejected, actually rejected by the government or the, the state, state council. However, it's a very small case, I think. If we look at the, United, the situation in the United States, actually ga gaming is more accepted in the every single state, I think. Or I should say mo most of the states in the United States. And fact one to see, if we talk about the Macau situation, yes, the revenue of gaming is decreasing, which is the red line. However, if we look at the number of the tourists in Macau, 
it stays the same. The revenue is decreasing because of the policy of the Chinese, Chinese government, Chinese, Chinese, Chinese mainland. However, popularity of the casino or Macau market, it stays the same. Why people can't spend money over the gaming? Because they can't bring money to, from mainland China to Macau. That's the only reason. And most of the gaming operator looks this situation very uh, welcome because if you if you look at the chart here, they made a, they are making a very big investment, still making a big, very big big investment up there. If someone say that the Macau industry, Macau gaming industry is decreasing. He have to explain this situation, why they're still investing on the market. And myth two, some opponent says that gambling is zero sum. Actually, he said that with quoting Paul Samuelson. Yes, he is a very well-known economist. However, I think that the statement of Paul Samuelson is just simply focus on the nature of gambling not the gaming industry itself. Gaming industry is the industry that turned mere gambling into the hospitality and, and the entertainment with hiring laborers, service people, and uh, purchasing Im immediate goods and, goods and service. If people spend $1 on ga gaming in, in IO, the revenue goes to this figure, 37% goes to the purchasing in, in, uh, intermediate goods and service. And the other 20, 20, 29 goes to laborers, and 26 goes tax, government revenue, and only eight becomes the gaming gaming uh, profit for the gaming operators. Nobody can deny the economic effect over the gaming industry. Actually, we are contributing to the economy. Factor two. Even if gambling is simply transfer of money, however, it's still worthful because a promotional law defines the purpose of the introducing the IR in this country as following. Promotion of tourism, vitalizing the local economy, and product, produce tax revenue. And tourism is the act, actually act, uh, activity that transfers the people's, people's consumption from one place to another. Right? So trans transferring money from one place to another place is still worth. Especially it happens between internationally, from foreign country to Japan. It simply adds the we wealth to our society. Or it can happen between city side to rural side. It's still worth because it, it vitalizes the local economy. Actually, this is the uh, policy called the Chisho Tose, one of the economic policy about administration focused on. That's why they're going to legalize gaming in this country. And my th myth three, however, there is another myth, especially among the people in favor in introducing in the IR that the success of the local economy is pr promised if once the IR is introduced to the, to the area. No, I would say no. As a, a few gaming specialists in this country, no. It is not always true that the introducing IR directly contribute to the worth of the local economy because IR is the property with the nature of enclosing their consumers into their property. And the, uh, IR has lodging, food and beverage, shopping, entertainment, and any other things in the, in the same one place. Because of that, the tourist doesn't, have any, doesn't, ha doesn't need to uh, go out from the property without, need, without reason. So the local government, locals has to do something to draw the traveler to come out to the region and spend money on that. And if we look at the Singaporean situation, actually they, are, they, have, they had a plan. <coughs> this is a map, Marina Bay Sands. And this is a picture you've seen on the uh, right, left side. 
Marina Bay Sands, which is an IR in Singapore, the major IR in, in Singapore, with Mar Lion. It's a symbol of uh, Singapore. Actually, this is set by the Singaporean government. Singaporean government actually required, required the developer to make the iconic cities, cityscape to introduce IR up there. To follow that request, they have to, they have to develop their property to show their best view from the city side uh, or the, the counter share, share of the Marina Bay, which is the city center. So if, we, if people would like to see the best view of the Singaporean sh sh night, night shot, they have to, across the bay, actually have to go to the city center to see the IR property. This is the system, actually. And fact three, we have another system. Uh, for example, in the United States, the jurisdiction that holds the bidding for the casino license recently uh, start including the contribution of local economy as a qualification of IR development. The applicant, which is the casino developers, has to show their idea how they can contribute to the local economy. Some of the op operators made a promise to the, to the local government that they are going to purchase goods and service from local business entity with X amount of dollars a year to contribute to the local, local economy. Or another operator promise, made a promise that to share their marketing pro program, which is called the complementary program. Uh, this is the system uh, give away the food and room or any other, any other transportation or any other thing. Uh, for their gamblers based on the wagering, the amount of the wagering. Originally, this is applied to the goods and service provided in, in, inside the uh, gaming property. However, recently, they are starting sharing the program to the outside of the, lo outside of the pro property with the uh, local, local business entities, which means that they are sharing profit to the local business business people. This, this, this thing just started in the, in the United States and we, Japanese government, have to see this kind of situation and adapt our strategy to introduce casino in our society. So as a conclusion, as we, we have seen, there are lots of myth about the gambling industry, which is not based on the fact or which is alternative fact. I would like to ask the people, especially people in the, in the media, in this room, to report based on the fact. It could be pro-gaming, it could be con-gaming, however, you have to be based on the fact, I think. This is it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we heard two arguments between the facts and the alternative facts. Uh, uh, believers and we'd like to open the floors to the your questions and answer we start with working press uh, please proceed to the mic at the front and uh, tell us your name and affiliation for you ask your questions uh, first question please okay but by yes please Good afternoon, Daniel Hurst, a freelance journalist. Um, Professor Torihata, um, you mentioned that the Singapore-style exclusions would not be appropriate in this in this country or would not work in this country. Can you elaborate on why that is? What what sort of protection, uh, protective measures could be put in place if um, if these developments proceed? And secondly, to um, Mr. Kisosan. Um, can you give it a bit more information about your organisation? Um, who do you represent? Uh, who do you work for? Thank you. Uh, let me answer in Japanese. 
あのえー、シンガポールのー、えーカジノの、えー、お客さんは、えー、ほとんど、まあ、あのアメあの中国とお、まあ、マレーシアでシンガポール市民の参加率は、えーまあ、2% 前後に非常にあの低い状態まで落ちてあのいます。うんでつまりあの、ラスベガスサンズ等のシンガポールのカジノの収益はシンガポール市民にはほとんど依拠していないでその理由でシンガポール市民に対してはカジノに参加させない厳しい規制を取ることが可能になっているで入場料を取るということも含めて厳しい規制を取ることが可能になっていると。So in Singapore, the customers, that, the guests that you see in the casinos basically are from China and Malaysia. And currently, the participation rate for the, of the Chinese citizens have gone down dramatically to a level of 2% recently. Now, in terms of protection of the、uh, Singapore citizens, there is a, a very strong regulation, and it is possible to strongly regulate the participation of local residents in the way that Singapore does, because、um, it, in, in terms of the、uh, entrance regulation, First of all, you can prohibit、uh, the citizens from coming in or actually、uh, taking some entrance fee to limit the number that flows in. The Nihon no Bawai wa, ano, Kyogaku no Toshi o Kaishu Suru Tame ni, ano, Gaiko Kuchin Sen Yo ni wa deki nai. Sore to koro ka, ho tondo no Shue ki wa, Kokunai Market, ma Nihon Jin no Pocket o ni ikyo suru s h i k ないわけです。But the situation is, in the case of Japanese casinos, it requires such a large investment that in order to collect the investment, the return,、uh, we cannot just rely on the participation of foreigners to Japan. Actually, we have to rely a significant amount of income from the Japanese citizen. で、在日米国商工会議所は、えー、日本で、えー、カジノを作る場合には、えーゲーミングタックスは 10% 以下にしなさい、えー、それから消費税は取らない、入場料は取らない、えー、そういう厳しい規制はあの、日本におけるカジノの収益数を損なうと、えー、いうことで、厳しい要求を出しています。でしたがって、私はシンガポールと成功した規制のモデルは、When we hear from the US、uh, Chamber of Commerce in Japan, they say that the gaming tax needs to be less than 10%. We should not be、uh, taking uh, the uh, VAT and also no entrance fees either. And so we. ごめんなさい結論のところもう一度お願いしますあ,あの日本ではシンガポール型のカジノ規制は無理だと in that sense in Japan we believe that it is difficult to restrict the Japanese citizens from participating the way they do in Singapore はい、えー、私の会社は民間の真空タンクです、えーまあ、政府系の発注の調査を受託をしていたり、もしくは民間企業さん、これは日本の企業さんが海外の市場を狙っていたり、まあ、海外の事業者さんが日本を狙っていたりと、そういった方々に対するコンサル,コンサルティングをするのが仕事です。So, uh, the company that I belong to, International Casino Institute, I represent this company, and we provide consultation to uh, governmental uh, Request or provide advice to foreign operators that are interested in Japan, or vice versa, Japanese operators or Japanese business people who wish to study the overseas situation. And you also asked who I work for. I do not work for anyone in particular. I am the boss. Next question. Okay, I will. I will ask Mr. Torihata a question. You mentioned that I think、uh, 3 trillion, trillion yen Japan is gaining, 3 trillion yen from gambling. That means 20 million Japanese must、uh, lose about 100,000 yen a year. And what about those who will win the money, basically?、Hmm? Who is going to win、uh, from this、uh, 3 trillion yen? Thank you. あの私はギャンブリングがゼロサムといったときにちょっと誤解があるんですが
、あのゼロサムというのはプラスとマイナスを差し引きするとゼロだと、でカジノ産業、カジノ企業の方には、えー、巨大なプラス、えー、利益が生まれるということは否定をしていないわけです。でしかし、そのカジノの儲けっていうのは、えー、結局、ギャンブラー、えー、お客さんのロストマネー、負けたお金であって、それは地域から吸い上げられた消費力であると、したがって、我々あの反対する側は、ギャンブル産業の繁栄というのは、普通の人たちの不幸を踏み台にして、実現しているものであるということで、反対をしているわけです。You know, you may understand when I say that gambling is a zero sum situation, you know, I mean that there is a, a winner and there is a loser, and the net of that is zero. That's what I mean. And so the winner is the casino industry. They're the ones who win by gaining the gamblers' lost money and the consumption made in their local regions. And as a、uh, person who is against the casino legalization, I believe that the gambling industry will thrive based on the unhappiness of the ordinary people who lost in gambling.、Uh, can I add a comment? Okay, if you look at, I just explained the revenue comes from the loser. Yeah, yes. The winner is casino, casino operator? No, I don't think so. If we look at this percentage, the winner is local, local economy. Casino take only 8%. And 33 goes to the purchasing of inter interim goods and service, and 29 goes to labor. s And also, the government is gaining tax. They are the winner. This is my theory. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you.、Uh, my name is Chris Cooper from Bloomberg News.、Uh, I'd like to ask my question to Tori Hattasan about gamblers in general.、Um, you mentioned the millions of gamblers that are, exist in Japan at the moment.、Uh, my first question is Do you think the actual number of gamblers would increase if there were casinos? Or would they just come from、uh, Pachinko? And my second question is what is your view on Pachinko? They seem to be in every neighborhood, they seem to be at every station.、Um, what is your thinking on Pachinko? Is it something that you would like to see taken away? Do you protest against that? Thank you. あの日本でカジノが合法化された場合に、えー、ギャンブラーの数はあの増えると思いますで日本のすでにあるあのギャンブリングとはあのカジノが提供するあのギャンブリングとやっぱ性格があの違うと思うんですねで一つは、えーまあ、社交性といいますか、えー、ハイレートあの非常に高い金額をかけることがあのできるとあのいうことであのよりあの人々を依存症に追い込んでいく例えば日本ではあのパチンコは24時間営業じゃないですねで競輪競馬はあの開催に行って日数けあのレース数が決まっているわけですが、えー、カジノは、えー、24時間365日それを提供すると。で特に、えー、関東、東京であるとか大阪、えー、大都市圏、えー、人口密集地で、えー、非常にアクセスが整備された形で、でそこに、あのー、ファミリーを呼び込むような形で、えー、営業されれば、えー、新しいマーケットが生まれる、えー、だろうというふうに、あのー、思っています。で二つ目の質問なんですが、はい、すみません。えっと、so um yes, if a casino is legalized in Japan, I do believe that the number of gamblers will grow. Um, but the nature of the casino gamblers will be a little bit different from the conventional gamblers in Japan. But in any ca case, the headcount, I believe, will go up. And when you think about the、uh, danger of casino gambling, it is, a very, it is something that、uh, has a very high speculative.
negative nature to it with high rate betting, with a gambling spirit. And so people will tend to have higher dependency on this game. And pachinko is not available 24 hours. The bike betting and the boat betting is also, you know, uh, available on certain days and not on certain days, but the casino will be available 24 hours, 365 days a year. So if we create an integrated uh, facility in highly populated areas like Tokyo or Osaka and lure the whole family to come and play any time at, at any point of the year, then I believe that a new market will be born. で、and in terms of your second question, what do I think about the pachinko industry? Well, as you pointed out, it is something that is casually available, easily available in any city, as you say. I, um, as a teacher in the university, feel that some of my students are addicted to pachinko, and it is a problem that pachinko is provided in any sort of um, entertainment area as in any station, and this is creating a dire issue on the problem gambling. So my uh, opinion that I'd like to submit towards Pachinko is that Pachinko needs to be acknowledged properly as a formal gamble, uh, and it has to be regulated. Thank you. Yes. えっと、フリーランスの亀松と申します。えっと、基礎さんにえっと、質問したいと思います。あの、えっと、カジノ法案について、えっと、ま、世論調査をするとですね、あの、まだ日本では、えっと、反対の意見が多いという結果が出ています
So I would say that um, actually, uh, as the truth of the matter is that if you ask other, um, if you look at other media's opinion polls other than Yomi Uri, there is even more a higher number for the uh, opposition, the people who are against it, um, and the reaction is actually uh, happening towards the fact that the bill, the casino uh, promotional bills, uh, passed so quickly at the end of last year that it's creating a reaction right now. And I also think that we did not. Not, we did not um, seize the opportunity to have a, a proper argument, including the ones who are against it, like Professor Torihata, because the, the, the opinions that they have, the argument that they are making is also quite justifiable. So it's a pity that we did not uh, secure the time to have a, a proper discussion on this. Rather, we just forced through to pass the bill at, in like two weeks at the end of last year. It, even for me, it was kind of like a thunderbolt from the sky. It was shocking to everyone. So I think that is why the public opinion is skewing more to being against this very quick movement of proceeding with casinos. で、あ、で、今後の話を。はい。で、今後のえ、どういうふうに変わっていくかという話なんですが、ま、おそらくあの世論というのは少しずつ変わっていくのは間違いないと思います。あの、メディアの論調も正直申し上げると昨日あ昨年の12月直後はやはりあまりにも急に通してしまったことそのものに対する批判がどちらかというとメディアはずっとそこにフォーカスをしてきました。ただだんだんと論調がより個別のより具体的な問題点を指摘を
to Singapore citizens, but uh, not in Japan, maybe, because p- pachinko commercials are legalized and they're aired. So maybe if we do see casino commercials on TV on a daily basis, the mindset and the awareness of Japanese citizens will change in the future. And that's when we need to have that very tight and strict regulation to protect them from the danger and harm of gambling. Thanks. All right. Uh, I would like to ask questions since that nobody is here is raising hands. I, I read in Huffington Post in December in Japanese. Uh, it, it reported or claimed that uh, uh, Mr. Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe rushed the casino bills to the parliament uh, because he wanted to please uh, President Trump, whose uh, biggest do- one of biggest donors is, is Sheldon Adelson, who is very lobbyist for the casinos. So according to this newspaper report, uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe is, is trying to please uh, Trump with this casino business. Do you have any comment on this report? Do you think it's credible? Thank you. あの、もちろんトランプタワーであのトランプ大統領とまああのアベシ首相が何を話したかそれから先日あのゴルフ場でえ何を話題にしたかは我々はあの確認のしようがないわけですがあのアメリカンゲーミングアソシエーションがえ
あ,あ、should should I say in Japanese? あのすみません、えー、と一つお伺いしたいのが、えーとまあ、IR 推進法案がもうあの5回通過したので、もうここからあの実施法案がもうすでに始まっていて、まあ、カジノを作らない方向にはまあいかないだろうというのは、なんとなくこう分かっているんですけれども、その中で、まあ、シンガポールのモデルを結構あの日本は参考にされているということなので、まあ、その中で結構、あのシンガポールって先にその依存症の問題をどうするかっていうのを先に取り決めてから、まあ、具体的的な実施法案を決められたっていうようなステップを取ってるかと思うんですがそうした中でじゃあ,あの依存症対策としては、まあ、どういうことがまあ望まれるのかあのいろいろ多分そのなんでしょうギャンブル依存の方とも対話されているっていう話もあるのでそうした中でまあどういう点を盛り込むべきかっていうのを一つ目の質問で聞きたいです。I have two questions, but、uh, let me translate the first one. So, we already know that after the IR、um, promotional bill was passed, we are going towards uh, preparing, um, finalizing the IR implementational bill this time. And I believe that the direction is not going against building a casino, it is going for, basically. And when doing so, Japan is very much studying the Singapore case. And the Singapore case is that before they actually、uh, fix the implementational bill, they、um, Clarified how to deal with the、uh, gambling problem, gambling issues and the dependency issue. So, my question is what kind of specific measures are being、uh, discussed about or, or being、uh, put into place right now in terms of、uh, pathological gambling countermeasures? あのご指摘のようにシンガポールの場合は2004年にカジノ合法化に踏み切って2005年には NCPG を設立をしてギャンブル対策依存症対策を始めたとで2009年にはあのセルフエクスクルージョンプログラムを始めてで十分な準備を行ってから2010年の2つのカジノのオープンを迎えたとでところがやはりあの依存症対策に対しては非常に不備が明らかになってきてその後もいろんな形でシンガポール政府は規制を強化をしてきたと、で例えばあの政府から補助を受けているような低所得者層に対しては、機械的にカジノの立ち入り禁止をするという措置もその後、導入をしたわけです。で、あので今は私は徹底してシンガポール政府は、自国市民にギャンブルをさせない、カジノに行かせない政策を取っているとあのいうふうに考えています。で、最大の,あの,あの効果ある対策というのは、やはりギャンブルはさせないことだと思っていますので、私としては実施法を阻止すると。Okay. So,、uh, to your point about Singapore, I'd like to explain some facts. So, they got the casino legalized in 2004, and they、uh, established the NCPG, the National Council on Problem Gambling, in 2005. And then in 2009, they started their self exclusion program. And finally, in 2010, they opened two casinos. So, they took a great amount of time to、uh, work、uh, very carefully on these countermeasures. But still, after the opening of the casino, they found out. That their countermeasures were incomplete and they had to add more, like、um, adding some ec- automatic exclusions to people who are living in subsidized、uh, public homes or getting uh, uh, support, f- public support. So, in this way,、uh, there are various countermeasures that need to be taken for the, the protection, of,、um, protection to be complete. And so, my、uh, solution is, is to not let people gamble at all. And Singapore does try to do that to their citizens. They basically try to keep the Singapore citizens out of the casinos. And so I would like to continue to oppose to even having the implementation law passed altogether. Then I, I have a second question that will relate to if、uh, you know, banning the citizen to you know, participate in the casino, casino, then that will mean maybe. I don't know whether in Japan's case, I mean, that will also、um, basically impact,、uh, I think, the investment that Japan can get through this like, IR、uh, from overseas. So I wonder, ultimately, Japan wanted to open IR 
um, basically because they, I think they want to increase, of course, the inbound tourism as well as, but uh, as well as their tax revenue for sure. So I wonder if they are, do you have either of the professors have done any like calculation of what kind of like uh, you know impact may have if uh, banning citizens to enter or not banning? ザネナガラ、え、入場禁止もしくは入場制限ですね。入場料カスも含めて、に関する影響の調査っていうのは私が知る限りは世の中に日本だけではなくて世界中に調査、あの存在してません。as far, as far as I know, unfortunately, I, there is no simulation calculation on uh, what will happen to the casinos when we ban the entrance or limit the entrance with fee. 高額の入場料を課すというのは世界的に見てもシンガポールが主要な国の中でシンガポールが初めて取った政策ですからそこに対する効果というのはまだ検証もされていないですしもっと言うとシンガポールの場合は最初から入場料を課してしまっているので変化
あの地方都市の方があのカジノ誘致に積極的なところあるんですけれども日本ぐらいの,その経済の規模があればやはりその大阪横浜東京のようなやはり大都市からやるのがこうメイクセンスするのかあのどういうご意見をお持ちなのか教えてください。あともう一つはあのネバダ州のようなあの規制厳しいそのルールを日本も何、えー、て言うんでしょう日本にも導入して、えー、とカジノをその運営する業者の認定とかをするようになるとかなりそのパーソナルインフォメーションっていうんですかその個人の,その預金、えー、の会社の経営者の,その家族の方の,その預金口座の情報とかクレジットカードのヒストリーとかそういうのも全部こうディスクローズしなくちゃいけなくなると思うんですけども日本の,あの実際そのカジノの運営に関わりたいと思っている会社の方々でそれだけの個人情報をディスクローズしようという、えー、とレディネスっていうんですかねそういう,こう心構え覚悟がある人たちっていうのは実際どれぐらいいるのか。どういうふうにその辺あの見てらっしゃいますか。So two questions from Ms. Raymoto from Reuters. So this is a question to Mr. Kiso.、Uh, which way、uh, should we start to be have a successful casino in Japan? Should we start from the large metropolitan areas or the rural areas, or does the location not matter?、Um, and is more the program or the contents more important? What are the keys to、uh, building a successful casino? We often talk about that Chiho Sose that you talked about, the regional revitalization that is a part of the national strategy. But we see this uh, rural, uh, the, the local areas proactively inviting the casinos. Do you, so, do you think it would make sense to have a bigger economic scale、uh, leveraging on the, for example, big cities like Osaka, Yokohama, or Tokyo? Does that make better sense? Or is it better to go、uh, in a more of a non metropolitan area? That's the first question. And the second question is、um, should we have a very strict regulation like they have in Nevada State,、um, which includes disclosing the、uh, financials of the management of the casino operator and the manager's families as well? So I was wondering、um, what you think about the readiness of these、uh, potential Japanese casino operators to open up their information about their own bank deposits and credit cards, not only theirs, but the families. えー、っと IR の成功っていうのは基本的に2つに分けて考えなければいけませんビジネス的な成功が必ずしも地域の成功にはつながらないということこれは私がプレゼンテーションの中で申し上げた通りでございますでビジネス的には大きい投資をして大きい回収をしたいというのがビジネス側ゲーミングインダストリー側の要求ではありますが一方で地域がそれによって豊かかになったかどうかというのは、まあ、どこで作るというのはあまり関係ないんですね、私がプレゼンテーションの中で申し上げた通り、どれだけ地域に経済的なこう正しい、まあ、好ましい影響を与えることができるか、それをきちっと地域行政が政策としてコントロールをしている、もしくはそこに非常にコミットをして、その政策を前もって考えていることというのがやっぱ成功の要因なので、大きい、小さいではないと思います。So, I think there, we can divide the success of IR into two elements, and that is the gaming industry's success and the region's success. These are not necessarily、uh, correlated, and obviously, the gaming industry wants to get the big ROI, but whether that contributed to the richness or the abundantness of the、uh, region. Is a, a different topic. So actually, it doesn't really matter the location of the IR, but it's really about what kind of economic impact that gaming industry can provide to the region. And, and for that to happen, I believe that the, the local municipality who、uh, provides the jurisdictions should have a very well thought out policy and also、uh, control the operations with very good、uh, policies. でバックグラウンドチェックに対して覚悟がある企業がどれほどあるかという話ですが実は日本の企業さんでもすでにカジノの機器のメーカーさんは海外のマーケットに進出をしていますそういう企業さんは当然海外もちろんネバダ州も含めてなんですがの基準に基づいたバックグラウンドチェックを受けてるんですね実は日本の企業さんでももうすでにそういう企業もあるし
やろうと思えばできるので、そ,れその点は問題がないと思います。Or actually, the casino device makers too, which exist in Japan and have、uh, expanded their business out of Japan to foreign states, even like Nevada. So, these、uh, man- the Japanese management are very,、uh, very ready or they're experienced in background checks. And I would believe that the other management would be、uh, ready as well. All right, this wraps up our event today. I would like to extend one year honorary membership.、Uh, Mr. Torihata, <laughs> please come to the <laughs> Risk Club anytime. <laughs> Mr. Kiso, we don't have gambling here, we gamble only about the news, basically. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming today. Have a nice evening. Thanks. Please welcome all. <laughs>